This is part two of the Martin County Open Studio Tour. If you haven't seen part one yet, we highly recommend that you go check that out. The Martin County Open Studio Tour is an event that is free and it's a self-guided tour allowing visitors to meet and talk with the artist in their studio workspaces. They get to view new artwork and purchase directly from the artist. We will interview several artists and see how they got their inspiration as well as what kind of art that they do. If you like what you see, perhaps you can make plans to come and visit Stewart during January, February, or March when they have the next Martin County Open Studio Tour. Here's a preview of what's to come. And when you see an artist's name in yellow, that means we did a 360 virtual tour that you will find in the description below. Click on the link to see the tour and then Google Maps will take you to the artist's studio if you decide to visit them. If this video was helpful to you in any way, perhaps it made you want to check out our artists. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. This is one way in which you can support us. It's all about food and places. And another way that you can support us is through our merchandise store. There's a link to that in the description below this video. Have fun and enjoy the video. So our next artist today is, please state your name for us. Hi, I'm Michael Ann Bellergeau. Okay, do you have a website? I do. My website is www.michaelannbellergeau.com. Very good. And what is your medium? I paint in oil and um, occasionally acrylic and um, really try to go as large as possible. Although I start usually with a plein air piece and plein air means painting in the fresh air. So I'll start painting outside in the field and then take that study into the uh, studio and then enlarge it and add to it um, anything I need using photographs. And how long have you been an artist? I've been an artist my whole life, but only recently have I become a professional artist. Um, I started teaching when my kids were in high school and I figured that it probably would be a good idea for me to build my skills. And then from there, because I was teaching and building my skills, I decided, well, I really just love doing this, so I'm going to go into it full time and I paint all day every day. So what was your inspiration to become an artist? What would you say? Um, I didn't really have any kind of inspiration, it just was always something that I was driven to do. Mm -hmm. I just always um, felt inclined to pick up a pencil and a sketchbook and create. And that might be with um, realistic subjects. It also might be with abstract subjects. Um, and I just went from there, just designing, creating, and then eventually building my skills to be more uh, realistic type painter. Okay, so now, um, Michael Ann, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Which of the ones you have on display today would you say were your three most favorites and why? Um, I have a lot of favorites, mostly because every single piece that I do it has some kind of meaning behind it, either in a place or what's happening in that place. And so I try to take every piece and if I'm starting it in the field, capture whatever that was, the spark that drew me to that spot in the first place. Was it the light? Was it the um, people there? Was it because it's a um, uh, very active place full of nature? I'm also a conservation artist, and so I try and emphasize nature, especially marine art. Marine art is my favorite, the art that has to do with the water, the coastal um, aspects, marshes, anything that has to do with conserving and keeping our water clean, and especially the animals and um, people that play around in those waters too. So I will go and start. Um, this piece right here is called Another Missed Opportunity. I started that by painting with a friend in front of Gilbert's Coffee Bar, and there's a huge marina there. And I started with the smaller piece 
um, just out there in the morning and I looked around and I thought, why are all these beautiful boats out here in this marina on a gorgeous day? Somebody's missing an opportunity to have a great day. So I painted the piece of that boat all by itself, kind of left behind, you know, in the busyness of life. And then when I went into the uh, studio, I felt like I could enlarge it and capture the beautiful light of that morning. And that uh, turned into this piece here. And if you'll notice, I tried to keep most of the lighting the same. The uh, light was coming in from the afternoon and hitting all of the boats um, in the morning glory. And it just turned out to be a really um, nice scene, kind of a peaceful scene and uh, what could have been the scene also. And of course the water, I just always love including water and the cleaner the better. This that I really had fun doing was a piece that um, started over in Fort Pierce. And this year is the 100th anniversary of the inlet at Fort Pierce of when it officially was finished. Um, if you know the history there, it filled in a couple of times. Fishermen really struggled and eventually um, they finished the inlet and the fishing could start happening again. So I was over there at one of the um, boat docks and these guys were cleaning their fish and there were hundreds of pelicans and birds around and they were just like a pack of dogs. The dogs would, I mean the, the pelicans would open their mouths when the guys would toss them some food and I asked the guys, I'm like, wow, they're very aggressive, aren't they? And plus they're very big. And he said, they're so aggressive. Sometimes he goes, one just points me in the behind <laughs> in order to get his snack. So I took a lot of pictures of this scene and tried to capture the peacefulness of, this, of the um, afternoon. They've been fishing all day. One thing that also struck me is that um, pelicans live a long time. And some of these pelicans were probably um, about the age of these guys. So they had been fishing here and pelicans were trained by their parents to fish and these guys also had a history a legacy of being trained by their dads and granddads to fish which just meant even more for the 100th anniversary of this really cool inlet. As you can see I love pelicans. I love everything about them. They're um, family um, fishers. They fish together. Um, they're very, very cooperative. Uh, they support one another. I've studied them a lot. And this particular piece is meaningful to me because it was done towards the end of 2020 when everyone had been locked down and we were starting to try you know, to begin to get out again. So I noticed these guys going across one very windy morning, going across the waves, they just skim. They generally fly in formation, but um, this pack, I don't know what they're called, a pack, <laughs> they had broken up and he was starting to soar up their leader and I just thought well that's just what's happening this year is we're all escaping from 2020 so the original title was escape from 2020 because I related that we were all going to fly to freedom and come out of this horrible time this horrible year and um, now it's just called uh, surf squadron um, because it's just what these guys do and I always will enjoy painting pelicans and birds um, any kind of sea life anything that kind of um, emphasizes the waters that um, we cherish so much. Another artist at our, this beautiful location. Let's find out her name and a little bit about her. What is your name? My name is Tepa Charles. Nice and to meet I'm, you. And I'm uh, Malu Bisset's sister. Okay. Older sister, yes. So you guys are sisters, beautiful. So let me ask you, what is your medium? My medium is oil. Only oil and yes. brushes. And how long have you been an artist? I have been an artist um, uh, since uh, 2010. And what was your inspiration that wanted you to pursue your artistry? Yeah, my, my uh, it was like that when I used to come here to my sister every year and uh, I haven't been painting and uh, doing some nice pictures before and she had started. So I sat here and, and, and uh, have looking at her and uh, what, what shall I do? Mm -hmm. So I take a pencil and begin to, to do something and 
and brush and that was the way I noticed that I can do some pictures. Yeah, I yeah. Note, and with the different strokes and everything, yeah. it looks beautiful. Yes. Very good. So do you have a website to where people would like to see some more of what yes, you do? Yes, I have. And what yes, is I have. that? It's pepacharles.com. If you can choose three of your favorite paintings out of all the ones that we have displayed, what would they be? It should be uh, this one at first. It's one of my latest paintings uh, uh, this year. And here, uh, I painted this here uh, in Malu Bisset studio. And it's uh, my flower things. I, I like uh, to paint flowers and uh, landscapes, uh, both in uh, mostly flowers from uh, all over the world, but uh, I paint a lot in Sweden too, because I live in Sweden and Finland. So it's uh, a lot of these, uh, these flowers there and uh, landscapes too. Sometimes animals, it depends a little bit, but uh, mostly I like to do, I like to paint uh, flowers and um, mostly these things I really love to look at. Okay, so what's your second one? So this is your second favorite painting? Yes, it is. And uh, I painted this in Sweden. And uh, my sister took it uh, to Florida for, uh, in a, after last summer. And um, was here in, in the palm room uh, to the show, in, in the show. And uh, I'm so proud I got the first place with this painting. Take us to your third one, because I guess we saved the best for last, maybe? It was one lady here in Florida who saw it's in my uh, website, this painting. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she likes me to, to do it in very big, big, big painting. It was, uh, it was a small one before, but now I'm, I'm going to, to just uh, do it ready and have some uh, lights here and uh, it should be uh, quite dark here but then then is this in the middle it's uh, be a brighter uh, yellow and uh, and uh, and here is the more lights so maybe I'm going to have it ready uh, this week because I traveled back to Sweden and Finland uh, after a week I'm at home thank you so much it was nice to meet you Another artist today. What is your name, sir? I am Terenzo, Terenzo Gan. So what is your medium? My medium, I work in acrylic and comma and oil. And what inspired you to become an artist? Well, I tell you, it was in 11th grade. I had an art class and my teacher was Miss Richards. And uh, it was my first art class. And so one of the assignments she gave us was you can paint anything you want. Uh, you can use whatever, acrylics, oils, whatever. And I thought, well, okay, that sounds like fun. So I, I did it during the course of our hour and a half class. I finished it and then I uh, put it on the table where, where the students left their work to be graded, left the class. The next time I come back, I went to the table, I got my, my painting, I turned it over and I went, oh my gosh, she gave me an A. And I was like, what is wrong with her, <laughs> you know? And, and I, w I was amazed. And so Miss Richards said, oh my gosh, the design, the, the, the flow, the colors were wonderful. And so that was my first experience doing abstract art. And it was such a, a revelation to me that, that I, I had something that, that maybe I could develop further. And how long have you been an artist? Well, uh, that class, I was uh, 17, so that would be 11th grade, so pretty much all my life. Okay, and do you have a website where people could go to? to I see do. It's TorenzoArt.com. Okay, and if you were to choose, which pieces would be your favorite three? Wow. Uh, for what's in the gallery today, I would say the one behind me. It's called Dazzle, and it's a, uh, a representation of the Florida sunflower. 
This piece actually started out as one canvas, uh, 48 by 60 uh, inches, and the background when I started uh, was much darker, and as I'm getting into the process of painting, I just felt the background was too dark, and I wanted to make it more light and more bright and more lively, so I, I went in with some white paint, and I just started moving around the canvas as I was uh, kind of uh, inspirationally led, intuitively led as I'm painting, and so I left a, a fair number of sections from the painting from what it was originally and then modified it and bring it into this wonderful white, um, somewhat pristine background. And then I started working with the color to bring out the yellow and the blue, and then as I'm doing that, in my mind's eye, I began to see the Florida sunflower. So when you look at the bottom of the, of the painting, you can see uh, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of things going on, and what that represents to me in, in this process is the creation of the sunflower. So if it comes out of creation, the second piece of art that uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about is called Celebration. This is an abstract that I created, oh, maybe two and a half weeks ago. What I really like about this painting is the subtlety of the colors that's coming through and there's a tremendous amount of movement. There's a lot of activity going on. So in one hand, there is a lot of action taking place, but what's happening is that these colors are beginning to come through in a soft and subtle way. So um, this is the first of four that I'm working on right now. I have two smaller, I'm sorry, four smaller ones I'm working on. And I'm really excited for the next two in this series. They're going to be large. One's going to be 40 by 60 and the other one's going to be 48 by 72. And so I will be posting these on my website so you'll be able to get a sense of what they are. And uh, I just invite you to come check them out. The third piece I want to talk about today is one of my favorites. I created this over a span of painting it just over about a period of three months, but it really started 10 years ago when I decided I was no longer going to wear neckties. And so as I'm driving in my car, I'm thinking, what am I going to do with them besides donate them? And I had this thought, wouldn't it be fun if I just wrap my head around uh, with, with these next ties and then do uh, reveal my eyes and my nose and then use this as a marketing piece for my studio. So that's what I did. Uh, just about a year ago, another artist and myself were talking about it and we came to the conclusion that it was time for me to paint this painting from the photograph that I had. So I began this process of painting and in the photograph, I had my hair coming out above the, the, the ties and whatnot. But when I was painting it, it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't, it wasn't giving me what I wanted in, in the image. So I started looking at other options that I could use. And so what I did is I, researched the, the, the Renaissance and some of the other periods of art, and I love the religious icons. So I decided I'm gonna put a halo around this now. But I had this halo and it's no longer a self-portrait. I'm thinking, there needs to be some, how, how am I gonna connect the, the viewer with this? So I decided I was gonna write a short story about this man. Uh, Nicotimus, and that is an outcome, or uh, really uh, as a biblical figure, Nic Nicodemus. And so I thought, well, Nicotimus, Nicotimus, that has a ring to it. So that was his name, and then I decided he needed to be the patron saint of neckties. So that's how this came into being. Now, I've written a short story about Nicotimus. And in my short story, uh, I give factual history about it, uh, the origin of the, of the necktie, which really began in first century China where the warriors wore a garment around their neck. Modern day necktie originated in France. 
So I just, my hat's off to the French. I mean, isn't that awesome? Except we had to wear those neckties, but I'm free of that. So at any rate, I have historical facts about the necktie. I have the origin of the modern necktie. And now I'm thinking I, I need to create some story, some background to Nicotimus. So I wrote a thousand word short story about Nicotimus and his contribution to the fashion world. And it's also believed that Nicotimus may be the father of the big box store, like these big stores we go to to buy lumber and electronics and all those kinds of things. And why do I say that? Well, it's believed in his uh, large tents, he had sales where he had carpets and rugs and smaller tents for camping and he had sheepskins and whatnot. And then throughout the town, uh, throughout the tent rather, he had these wonderful signs in Hebrew that said, no harm came to the animals in the production of these pelts. So with that, I invite you to go to my website. You can read more about Nicotimus and how he became canonized as the patron saint of neckties. So I invite you to my website, terenzoart.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I am Terenzo Gan. And I would just love to have you come and check me out. And uh, maybe we'll meet up sometime. Thank you. So today we're at another studio. So can you please tell us your name? My name is Jim Dirks. And what is the name of your particular studio here? It's Stuart Stained Glass. And what is your medium? We do stained glass, etched glass, carved glass, uh, edge lit glass. How long have you been an artist? Uh, pretty much all my life. But I've been in the stained glass business now for 40 years. What is it that really inspired you to become an artist? Uh, I mean, I've done different mediums over the years and stuff, charcoal, uh, pencil, lead painting, different things like that, ceramics all through high school and in the college and stuff. But the uh, stained glass kind of started out as a hobby and became more of a, a, a business. We bought it in 1982. So I understand this is a family business, so your wife helps you out and your son. No, I, I, I would like to say that I help my wife out. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's uh, uh, the one that actually makes the stained glass now. Uh, I do the designs, the sales, installations and stuff. My son and I, we do the carved glass, the etched glass and things like that. But she's the one that actually is making the stained glass. So let me ask you, do you have a website so that if people would like to go and see your pieces, they could? Sure, it would be stewardstainglass.com. So one last question. Mm -hmm. If um, someone was interested in becoming an artist, what do you think would be some words of wisdom that you could share with them in order to be inspired to do so? Well, I would say one of the most important things an artist can do is to get a little bit of a business class involved. Too many artists fail on that, uh, and I think it's very important that they understand that you are running a business. If you want to make a living out of it, you got to think of it as a business. Deliver on time, and deliver exactly what you said you're going to do. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. So today we're at a, another art studio, and please tell us your name. Oh, I'm Suzanne Connors. And what is the name of the studio? Um, this is the IU Fiber Studio. So let me ask you, um, how long have you been an artist? I have been an artist for my whole life, in one way or another. What inspired you to be a, an artist? Um, gosh, I don't know. I think just, you know, art. Just being around art, being around textiles, being around beauty travel, just experience. So what is your medium? Um, I'm a fiber artist. Do you deal with fibers, fabrics, textiles, things like that? Yes. Do you have a website so if somebody wants to come and see the type of pieces that you have? Uh, yes, I have a website. It's www.ifiberstudio.com. So we have another question for you. We'd like to know if someone was looking to become an artist, 
what do you think you would like to share with them to help them along to realize that um, this is something that they would definitely get a lot of benefit from if they would do so. Just do it. Just get up and do it. Just show up every day. Just do it and eventually it'll come. Take classes, take um, travel, take pictures. Just do it. Let me ask you, do you have classes that teaches the type of art that you do here with fabrics? Yeah, we offer a wide variety of classes here at the I Fiber Studio. Um, I teach some of the classes myself. For other ones, I bring in master artists from all over the world to teach them. Okay, good to know. So if we're interested in, in learning this art with the fabrics, this is a place to come. There's not too many around that does this, that's for sure. No. We'd like to just say thank you so much for taking the time to let us interview you because we really appreciate the um, education that you've been able to share with us. Thank you.